Greetings. This is a quick review of this IKBC CAT6 shielded Ethernet cable. Note that term, CAT6, not Category 6. More on that in a moment. According to the advert, the cable's rated for 1 gigabit per second transfer rate. Let's try it out on the Fluke Link IQ. Not bad. Fluke reckons it can do 10. Over this length is not surprising though. As you can see, this Category 5 cable is longer and that can also hit 10 gig. So as a three meter patch lead for gigabit use, this thing should be absolutely fine. There's some interesting stuff written on the cable jacket though. Let's take a look and break it down. We can ignore the old 5M at the end. That's just a meter marker that increments along the cable drum. At the beginning though, it's got CAT6, which you may assume means it's a category six cable. We'll see. FTP in this case means file twisted pair. So there should be a file screen around the whole bundle of twisted pairs. 4PR stroke 23AWG means there are four pairs of conductors, all of which are 23AWG in size. Now it starts to fall apart a bit. It says verified to EIA stroke TIA 568B.2. 568B.2, however, only covers up the Category 5E cable. Category 6 was introduced in 568B.2-1. So Category 6 cables which give an EIA stroke TIA mark should be to at least 568B.2-1 or 568C.2. Next, ISO IEC 11801, which is a very similar cable standard. Now it should be able to pass this as long as it uses copper conductors and not copper clad aluminium, as IEC 11801 precludes the use of CCA conductors due to their resistance. We'll check that in a moment, but the web page states that the conductors are copper. Finally, we have EN501. Given that this is printed on the cable, I don't hold up much hope for what's inside. Why? because EN501 is the standard for roofing products from metal sheet. That's why what it's supposed to comply with, if it's going to claim compliance at all, is EN50173, not just EN501. So let's cut the plug off and look inside. What we have at first glance appears to be what was claimed. Here's your aluminium screen. We've got another plastic wrap underneath that that just bonds everything together. Uh, there's your plastic separator, which is used in CAT6 to separate the four twisted pairs. And we have our twisted pairs. The twisted pairs do seem to have the same number of twists per, per, conductor, uh, uh, per conductor pair. And I'm not sure if it's supposed to be different for each, con uh, for each pair. It's supposed to have a different number of twists. Um, we'll take a look at another cable shortly. Yeah, that's definitely aluminium. I scrape the, we use the blunt edge of the knife. It's brought all the coppers just straight off. Let's compare that with some Brand Rex Category 6 cable. You can see the Brand Rex has more twists to the conductors. And as for the conductors themselves, let's take a look. Ah, of course, this is using multi-strand cable. The other one should be using stranded cable because it's meant as a patch cord. Patch cords use stranded cable. But if you're stranded CCA, it just fall to bits. So this is actually using multiple strands and should be, if I scrape it, it should not reveal anything other the more copper. So in conclusion, you could use this for your PC, as you saw from the flute test results, it would, it would function perfectly well for the PC. You wouldn't want to run it with the wireless access point because 
The copper-clad aluminium would struggle then with the power consumption of the wireless access point. So it's going to cause voltage drop, that which could cause crashes, or as the voltage drops, the wireless access point is going to try and draw more current out. So, you, so that will cause the wire to heat up more, which will volt, drop the voltage even further, until eventually something is going to give somehow. So, use it for your PC, fine. Use it for a printer, fine. Don't use it for a wireless access point. And the CAT6, it says on there, that's meaningless. This cable does not meet category six specification. Thanks for watching.